Welcome back, everyone. I'm happy to finally come back from that segment with something good to talk about. Unemployment is falling so much that there's actually a labor shortage. It could not be a better time to be an employable American, particularly if you're a veteran, with all the special skills and leadership qualifications that come with it, right? And that's where the positivity ends. The unemployment status for veterans is catastrophic. Sure, the Department of Labor cites our unemployment number at 3%. Doesn't sound too bad, right? Well, it's bullshit. The way the government measures employment is similar to the way it measures everything. It's a bare minimum, quota meeting, unicorn-filled fantasy of bureaucratic doublespeak. Basically, if you got some cash for an odd job you did earlier that fiscal year, they consider you employed and check off a little number on their clipboard and pat themselves on their spineless backs. But it's not easy to feed your family with odd jobs. That's not being gainfully employed, and everyone knows it. Penn State University's The Veterans Metric Initiative has a much more realistic approach that gives us an accurate number of how many of us are struggling post-service. And it's 61%. 61%. Now, divide that number by three, multiply it by the amount of mindless bureaucrats in Washington, and that's how far the Department of Labor has their heads shoved up their ass. <laughs> the initiative also found that of those of us who are actually gainfully employed, 55%, more than half, are overexperienced and overqualified for the job they have. This is what the eggheads call underemployment, and it's just as detrimental to the well-being of veterans as unemployment. And we all know how f maddening that is. Too many of us go from operating billion-dollar equipment and being in charge of human lives to mopping up a fast food chain because the military gave us a crash course in resume writing and a challenge coin in lieu of actually helping us properly transition. We've known for decades how abysmal the post-service job market is for us. And now, we finally have the numbers to back it up. Amidst this travesty, Activision Blizzard has created a program called the Call of Duty Endowment, which is one of the largest nonprofits currently helping veterans with unemployment. Over the past 12 years, they have helped over 100,000 vets find jobs, gain full employment, not just delivering pizza every other Thursday or whatever passes for a full-time job at the Labor Department. If you're struggling with un- or underemployment, maybe check out the Call of Duty Endowment Program. Now, that organization sounds like they're doing good things, but some of you might be wondering why a company that makes video games, where people pretend to go to war, is doing more for people who actually go to war than the actual government that sends us to war. Yeah. And you know what? So the fuck am I. The Call of Duty Endowment's white paper cites a few lessons learned from the nonprofit experience in fighting veteran unemployment. The first lesson, finds that veterans need more education on how to translate their resume to the civilian equivalent. For instance, if you're a team leader in the infantry, you should probably claim to have middle manager experience and avoid starting your cover letter by typing in all caps, slayed bodies. And shit, man, stop signing off your emails to HR with napalm sticks to kids. Although I know that can be a tough one to adjust to. Many of us kind of had to learn that the hard way, didn't we? The second lesson found that mentorship and employment coaches were crucial in helping veterans find good work upon transitioning out. Third lesson is actually an eye-opener. It basically says that Uncle Sam, who we fought and bled for, isn't doing their part. It cites that the federal government's roughly $300 billion budget, less than 0.001% is spent on veteran programs for transition and employment. They cash in the farm, turning us into chain-smoking killing machines. And then they spend peanuts turning us back into people. I do not know how you can look at that number and not feel like punching someone or vomiting or punch vomiting. <laughs> this is such an egregious betrayal. They beg us, many as teenagers and young adults, to be the sheepdog at the gate, to use our bodies, our lives, and our well-being to be the stalwarts of the American way of life and the dream of representative democracy. They put us in mold-filled homes, send us on training ops in the woods filled with grizzly bears, and ask us to do the unthinkable in geopolitical f fests across the world. And then, after all that, they give us a high five, say thanks for being the blanket of security under which I lay my head every night. Good luck being normal again. And that's it. And we're just out there, alone, trying to explain to some McDonald's manager that we can use the milkshake machine because we've driven f tanks trying to fit into colleges with these pampered freshmen half our age, complaining about capitalism while all we want to do is explode because that's how we've been taught to handle conflict. 
laboring on construction sites while our backs and limbs are already deteriorated, far worse than our civilian peers, and we're expected to be just as proficient. Sitting in interviews with fancy offices, begging someone for a job from some corporation who enjoys global profits because of the global stability that we fought for, with no support from our own government in how to navigate these fields that are so disconnected from military life, they may as well exist on another planet. Look, we complain a lot about the brass and the upper echelons here. And I long for the day when I can just gush and say all sorts of nice stuff about the government that I pledge my service to. But time and time again, they prove themselves to be incompetent vampires, sucking away at our souls and giving us nothing in return. To increase efforts and spending on veteran employment shouldn't even have to involve new taxes. You're telling me you can't move some of that 300 billion around? Every bill that gets through gets earmarked to hell with pet projects from greedy pricks on both sides of the aisle. You got nothing in there to help some corporal who took Fallujah? Some supply sergeant who kept every airplane in Germany fueled up? The captain who secured the embassy you visited so you could pretend to care about starving children during campaign season? You got nothing for them, really? The plethora of issues our community faces from depression and suicide and substance abuse and homelessness are all direct secondary causes from the struggle to adjust to the civilian workforce. The sooner the government stops lying about our employment numbers and starts doing their jobs, the better. We should not have to rely on the kindness of a video game company. On that note, I'm out. Take care of yourselves and reach out to someone you served with. You never know who needs to hear a friendly voice. I'm actually gonna see an old war buddy tonight. He was one of the best leaders I have ever met. And ever since he got out, I always say the same thing whenever I see him in his new uniform. Uh, medium number four, Coke Zero, light ice. <laughs> All right, we'll see you on the next show, guys. Good night. What's going on, guys? If you like that, Click this link here to watch more. If you're ready to subscribe and keep us in business, click on this link here. And you know the Selective Service is coming back. <laughs> I don't want to keep my day job, so subscribe. <laughs>